Many insurers issue contracts under IFRS 17 that include features that share returns on underlying items with the policyholders, such as unit linked, variable annuity and with profits contracts. IFRS 17 draws a distinction between policies with direct participation features and other contracts, which is reflected in the measurement model applied. Where a contract meets the definition of a direct participating contract, the variable fee approach must be applied, which is a modified version of the general measurement model. Insurance contracts with direct participation features are insurance contracts that are substantially investment related service contracts, under which an entity promises an investment return based on underlying items. Assessment of whether a contract is a direct participating contract is made at initial recognition. No future reassessment is required unless there is a substantial modification to the contract which would have resulted in the contract no longer meeting the criteria for the variable fee approach at initial recognition. Participating contracts which do not satisfy all of the direct participation criteria are referred to as indirect participation contracts and are measured under the general measurement model. Reinsurance contracts either held or issued cannot be measured under the variable fee approach. This was debated at the January board meeting. However, the board concluded that allowing the variable fee approach to be used to measure reinsurance contracts would be inconsistent with its view that a reinsurance contract held should be accounted for separately from the underlying insurance contracts issued. The variable fee approach has the same requirements as the general measurement model at initial recognition. At subsequent remeasurements, the approaches diverge. Under the variable fee approach, adjustments to the contractual service margin use current discount rates, whereas under the general model, discount rates are locked in at initial recognition of a group of insurance contracts. Under the variable fee approach, changes in the fulfillment cash flows arising from changes in the financial variables and the time value of money are regarded as part of the fee for future service and recognised in the contractual service margin. Under the general model, these are recognised in the statement of comprehensive income. This applies unless the entity meets the conditions for risk mitigation option and chooses not to reflect in the contractual service margin some or all of the changes in the financial risk on its share of the underlying items. Insurers may hold derivatives to mitigate financial risk arising within insurance contracts. IFRS 17 gives entities an option to exclude the impacts of risk mitigation from the contractual service margin if certain criteria are met. If an entity chooses not to adjust the contractual service margin, it will have to make a disclosure to this effect. The Board's tentative decision proposes to expand the risk mitigation option for direct participating contracts, so that it may also be applied when an insurer issues a reinsurance contract held to mitigate financial risk. This means that insurers will be permitted to adjust the contractual service margin when either a derivative or a reinsurance contract held is used for risk mitigation purposes, subject to specific conditions being met. If you have any questions in relation to the variable fee approach or any aspect of the standard, please contact a member of Deloitte's IFRS 17 team.